Apple Card is the credit card created by Apple. You earn 3% daily cash back up front when you use it to buy a new iPhone 15, AirPods, or any products at Apple. And you can automatically grow your daily cash at 4.15% annual percentage yield when you open a high-yield savings account. Apply for Apple Card in the Wallet app on iPhone. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners subject to eligibility. Savings accounts by Goldman Sachs Bank USA. Member FDIC. Terms apply. Hold music. You want to avoid it, and so do your customers. So say goodbye to hold music and hello to faster, smarter support with Salesforce. Make service more personal and agents more productive using built-in trusted AI. Then watch costs and wait times drop and satisfaction soar. Support customers in a whole new way with Service GPT. Learn how at salesforce.com slash service GPT. This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2516. How to Stop Living Paycheck to Paycheck and Start Making Progress by Jackie Beck of JackieBeck.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This show is actually one of multiple shows in our network covering different topics. So if you like the idea of us reading articles to you, be sure to search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this and check out our other podcasts. But for now, let's get right to today's post as we optimize your life. How to Stop Living Paycheck to Paycheck and Start Making Progress by Jackie Beck of JackieBeck.com Wish you could stop living paycheck to paycheck? You're not alone. According to the Brookings Papers on Economic Activity, about a third of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. That's about 38 million folks who'd be in trouble if they had to pay an unexpected bill or would be panicked if they lost a job. If you're one of those folks, you know it sucks. It's scary to live on the edge or to not understand why you just can't seem to get ahead. I know this because I used to be one of them, but it doesn't have to stay that way. You can stop living paycheck to paycheck. Here's what it takes to change things. Start with an objective look. First, you've got to step back and objectively figure out why you're in this situation. That can be tricky because most people assume they're living paycheck to paycheck because they don't make enough money. Makes sense, right? Yet two thirds of those 38 million people are middle class, many making more than 41 grand a year. It's by no means just the poor who are barely making ends meet. If you're one of those who in theory actually make decent or even great money, but still can't seem to stop living paycheck to paycheck, you might be beating yourself up about it too. Know that it's what you do going forward that matters, not what you've done in the past. No matter what your income, if you're living hand to mouth, bringing in more money feels amazing and making extra money certainly could help you stop living paycheck to paycheck, but it might not help as much as you think unless you change a few other things too. That's why you won't know what to do next until you figure out what happened. So start with an honest look at why you're living paycheck to paycheck. Ask yourself these questions if you want to stop living paycheck to paycheck. Ask yourself, what bills do I have to pay every month like clockwork and how much are they? What else do I usually spend money on? Look at your recent spending online or at statements instead of just trying to remember this. What kinds of expenses do I usually forget about or just hope don't end up happening? How much money do I bring home each month and from what sources? Do I have debt? And do I have an emergency fund? Before you can stop living paycheck to paycheck, you need to get clear answers to all of those questions. The last two about debt and an emergency fund are extra important. Why? Because owing money literally means you're spending an extra amount of your money every month to pay for things you've already bought things you may no longer even have. So getting out of debt will make a huge difference in the amount of money you have available every month. And if you don't have an emergency fund, that's a big red flag. Everyone has emergencies, everyone. It's not unusual at all for your car to break down, to lose a job, to experience disasters, etc. So you need money waiting for those things. 
That means you need to do everything you can think of to get money set aside for emergencies right away as the number one priority. What's after that? For now, reduce expenses where possible. I've been in the position where I'd already cut back really far. If you're in that same place, living at or below the poverty line, don't beat yourself up over it, but do look deeper just to make sure. And no matter what your situation, do what you can to reduce expenses wherever possible, at least for now. What are your top expenses? Housing, taxes, food, transportation, childcare, and utilities, especially if you include cell phones, internet, and cable, are usually way up there. How could you reduce each of those? What are you spending on but not really enjoying or using? What could you get for less? Keep in mind that cutting a big expense will give you the most mileage. Could you move to a less expensive home or area? Rent out a room in your home? Do you have a car you could sell? Could you keep your existing car once you're done paying it off instead of buying a new one? The answer to that last one is yes, and I highly recommend it. Or maybe you could cancel cable and make your kids pay for their own cell phones if they wanna keep them. This will not kill them. Having a hard time knowing where to cut back? Try asking yourself this. If I absolutely had no other choice, say in order to save a loved one's life, what expenses could I cut out or reduce? Even if I really don't want to or can't immediately think of a way that it would be possible or convenient. Remember, you're saving a life. What could go on the chopping block? Rank those puppies in order of easiest to hardest to do. The changes you make now don't have to be forever, which can make them a lot easier to swallow. The idea is to do everything you can to get yourself into a better financial position. Think about making more money. Of course, you can also work at bringing in more money. If you're making minimum wage or an entry-level salary, by all means, do what you can to increase your income. Ask for a raise, look for a better job, or make money on the side but don't add to your expenses in order to make more money. If you wanna go back to school, find a way to do it with cash, grants, scholarships, or employer-paid schooling. The goal is to stop barely making ends meet, not make it harder, even short-term, to do so. Use the one-two punch to stop living paycheck to paycheck. The one-two punch of cutting expenses and increasing income will give you the boost you need to make these life-changing money moves. Start an emergency fund, get a handle on budgeting and smoothing out your irregular expenses over time, and start paying off debt if you have it. Paying off your first debt will free up more money and you'll really start to feel some relief. Once you've moved from paycheck to paycheck life to the conscious spending and saving life, you'll be motivated to continue improving your money situation. You know, planning for retirement, spending more on the things that matter to you, etc. Remember, changing your financial situation will take time, but most awesome things do. You just listened to the post titled How to Stop Living Paycheck to Paycheck and Start Making Progress by Jackie Beck of JackieBeck.com. If I would have kept making only the minimum payments on my credit cards, my debt would have taken me 47 years to pay off. These are real National Debt Relief customers. I knew I wasn't going to be able to get out of debt by myself. Credit card, medical, or personal loan debt? National Debt Relief negotiates with your creditors to reduce what you owe. National Debt Relief got me out of debt. You could be debt-free in as little as 24 to 48 months. Visit nationaldebtrelief.com to learn more and get started. nationaldebtrelief.com. When I decided to escape the whole paycheck to paycheck lifestyle, it was surprising to me that increasing my income wasn't the simple solution. Back in college, one of my professors casually mentioned that hitting a six-figure income by 30 was the golden ticket to success. So I hustled hard and high-fived myself for hitting that milestone before the big 3-0. But it turns out income is just one part of the money game. What matters even more than income is the gap between what you earn and what you spend. That's where the magic happens, where you build your wealth. You grow the gap by making more and spending less, simple as that. But you can't just set it and forget it. You've gotta watch over that gap like a hawk. 
track your expenses, stick to a budget, and check your savings rate every month. That's how you keep your financial house in order. It's amazing how much this simple act of paying attention can change things rapidly. Things really start to move when you put that gap to work for you. Use it to wipe out debt, set up an emergency fund, or invest in your future. Managing that gap is what mastering your money is all about. And it's the ultimate way to break free from the paycheck to paycheck grind. And that's a wrap for another Monday show. Have a great rest of your day and start to your week. And I'll be back tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.